Every year, I like to look at the Pokemon sprites that stand out the most in the series, usually the weirdest. Now that I've covered all three sprite types of Gen 1 and all of Gen 2 in videos, it's time to move on to Hoenn and Gen 3 with Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald versions. However, unlike the sprites of the first two Gens, none of the sprites from Gen 3 really looked abnormal, with the games now using the technology of the Game Boy Advance, showing why Advance is in its name. Except for Jinx, she was kind of freaking out a bit. So for this installment of Super Intense Pokemon Sprite Analysis, non-official name, I'll be looking at the coolest sprite designs of all 386 Pokemon available at the time of the Hoenn games. These sprite designs stand out above the rest, whether they make the Pokemon look awesome or just like they're having a fun time. So let's take a look at my top 10 coolest Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald sprites. Number 10, Polyrath. Look at that action pose. Similar to his red and blue sprite where he was about to give you the backhand slap of doom, this Polyrath is not messing around. As he enters the battle in fighting form, already throwing out a fist right before the combat begins. In the fighting business, we like to call that a cheap shot, or a sucker punch, but that's the actual name of a move and Polyrath can't learn it, so it just gets confusing if I use that term. Maybe Polyrath was just really excited to show off that he finally has fingers in his new form compared to the mitten hands that Poliwhirl has. However, in Ruby and Sapphire, there was actually an error where Poliwhirl's sprite was given fingers when he should not have them. What? How could they make such an egregious mistake? Emerald version fixed this by making Polyrath the only one in the evolutionary line with fingers and a thumb once more. Number 9, Nosepass. This one is cool because we have Nosepass with a design never seen outside of the third gen handheld games. Compared to his official artwork, this sprite looks as if it was made smooth, like a round stone after erosion, while in reality he is much bulkier with flat surfaces. No other Nosepass artwork depicts him like this, not even the anime or GameCube games that came out around the same time as the handheld games. So perhaps this was an early in development design for him before they went with the extra thick variety. Either way, it's interesting to see Nosepass with this more traditional Easter Island head look. Another note is that his hand ear things make it look like he's doing a Psyduck pose, and his foot that's walking forward looks like a mouth, as if he's a cartoon character that's whistling, or smoking the old Torkoal. Number 8, Machoke. This is a unique sprite for Machoke. He's usually flexing when we see him in games, but this shows a more gentle side of him. We see it on occasion, like in the Neon Destiny Evangelion Pokemon cards with Light Machoke. Look at him, he's protecting that flower from getting drenched in the rain. That was the last Pokemon card for Machoke before Ruby and Sapphire came out. Coincidence? Yeah, probably. He appears to be bending down to talk to someone not as tall as him, maybe teaching a child the way of the fighting type. I could also see him bowing in the style of a ninja reporting back from a mission. However, in Emerald version, we see this stance is more to ready himself for his pre-battle pose with the extra animation that game added. He now looks more antagonistic, like he's the bully and he knows he's bigger than you. Or maybe he's just so pumped that the battle's about to begin. Well, joke's on you, Machoke. I'm having you fight a Mistrevis. Good luck hitting your opponent now. That'll teach you for all those years of sprite arrogance. Number 7, Shuppet. Shuppet's design was always so cool and mysterious to me, despite the simplicity. Shuppet and his ghostly counterpart Duskull had some great sprites, with Duskull's high-class hands behind the back pose, and Shuppet's haunting stare. However, what made Shuppet's presence stand out in this sprite is that you can only see his eyes on the head. Shuppet's face is supposed to have a friendly little mouth, which makes him look like a cute ghost. However, the mouth on his official artwork makes him look more uneasy, like he's thinking, Oh, that milk had the texture of cottage cheese. Why did it have the texture of cottage cheese? He even sticks his tongue out at you in Gen 5. Huh. 
You mischievous fiend! But without that simple line drawn to form a mouth, without a key feature that helps him convey emotion, you can't really tell what his intentions are when you first meet him in a cemetery. Not to mention, compared to his later sprites, his eyes were more faded, making him feel like a lost, soulless spirit rather than an impish specter who just wants some friends. Number 6, Snorlax. Oh my god, he just wants a hug! Admittedly, this is not the most badass Snorlax has looked, but in past games, Snorlax is either lying on his back or standing when in battle. Here, he's not quite lying down, but he definitely looks like he wants to do something productive today. He's balancing on his butt with precision. Do you know how strong his glutes must be? We never thought about that prior to this sprite, since Snorlax was just known for sleeping, hitting hard, and eating an impossible amount of food. And with all of that fat, you'd expect that booty to just kind of mix in with the rest of his fat. But thanks to this sprite, we learn his true potential, and that he can pose like She-Hulk when doing her backdrop. I was not expecting that comparison today. Number 5, Nidoking. Nidoking wants to kill us. Look at that face. It has the look of bloodlust. He said not to bother him, but what did you do? The exact opposite. And now Nidoking will make you pay with your life. And those are my thoughts about this sprite in a nutshell. There certainly have been angry Pokemon sprites in the past, but this one looks like it's meant to strike the fear of God into your opponent. The angle that he's at makes it seem like he's leaning forward to look over you, as if he's taller than anything you can throw out there. And his fingers are clenched, as if he's ready to just barrel through anything with his fists. Then you look at the Pokedex to see that he's only 4'7", and realize your fear about his height was irrational. However, then you read his entry and learn his tail can knock down telephone towers, and your fears are justified once again. Number 4, Walrein. This walrus is very angry. I like how he has this authority when he's in the midst of barking in the sprite. This sprite could also fall in the goofy category for me, since when I played through these games over and over for the first five years or so, I thought Walrein's nose was his head and the nostrils were large dot eyes based on the sprite. By extension, I thought his actual head was a giant mane of hair behind a tiny bald head, as if he was a classical music composer. Just imagine if that was the Pokémon. How would his mouth even work? The mouth is the size of the nose itself. Number 3, Haunter. Haunter is the king of sprites. I can't think of one that I don't like. Gen 1 had that glow, Gen 2 added this red aura to his hands, and this sprite in Gen 3 enhanced that glow, making it seem like his detached hands are floating with some sort of psychic energy. I really like that added element in this sprite that we don't see in his official artwork. Look at his right hand in this sprite. It's like he's planning something dastardly with it. Based on the pose, it looks like that hand is about to grab your body and pull your living soul from it, just like what Haunter did to Ash in the anime. Haunter's hand also kind of reminds me of that Illusion Gate ghost hand that killed Camula in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And if you don't recall that second reference, maybe it's because 4Kids censored her soul actually being ripped from her body in the dub. Yet, they were fine with showing a 10-year-old getting temporarily killed via soul rip. I guess we know whose life was valued more by 4Kids in the Ash Ketchum vs. Camilla debate. Or we can chalk that up to their inconsistent random censorship. Number 2, Deoxys. Alright, this one is just unfair. Deoxys is one of the coolest looking Pokémon, so of course he has one of the coolest looking sprites. Since he has three additional forms, I'm going to focus on the ones we got in Emerald, the Speed and Original form. The standard one is pretty neat. He looks as if he's presenting something with pride, like his ID at a bar right after he turns 21. Or perhaps he's delivering the final blow with his Genki Dama, or Spirit Bomb. However, let's look at his speed form sprite. This thing looks like it can kill you whenever it wants to. I like that his head has the appearance of hair blowing in the wind, like he's your standard anime girl running to school because she's late. 
And considering the speed form is likely running around all the time because he's so fast, it's a fitting comparison. Meh, I could also see Deoxys pulling off the schoolgirl outfit look pretty well. Number 1. Grovile Ah, here we see the majestic Grovile as it takes flight. Watch as it soars through the air and never lands because it's a motionless 2D sprite. Of all the sprites in the game, he's one of the few that's jumping upwards rather than just facing his opponent or looking downwards. What really makes this sprite is how much of an action pose he's doing. Trico and Skeptile are both just standing there, basically doing the same pose. Yet right in the middle of this evolutionary line is a Pokemon that is so hyped to evolve and grow those leaves on his arms, that he just needs to leap up in the air and jump around from tree to tree like he's in a filler episode of Naruto. He looks like he's the hero of his own story, patrolling the world in the pursuit of evil. With the raw level of enthusiasm in this sprite alone, Grovile takes my top spot of Pokemon sprites seen in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. So, what did you think of these sprites? Did you have any favorites that I discussed? Were there some that I left off that you would have included? Let me know in the comments. Now that we've dived into the realm of the third gen games, I wonder what Pokemon game sprites I'll cover in the future when this topic comes up again. I've got an idea. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.